Hola estudiantes, ¿cómo están? Today we are going to start with another very important topic, but before that I hope you have watched the other videos on Spanish. Uh, we have uh, looked at personal pronouns, we have looked at verb ser, which means to be. We have also looked at how to greet someone, how to do small talk. Now today we are going to look at pronunciations of all the Spanish alphabets. Okay? As you can see on the screen, we call alphabets as los alfabetos in Spanish. Los alfabetos. So how are we going to do this? We are going to do this in two different ways. We are going to look at two different screens. The first screen, we are going to look at how to pronounce that particular letter, A, B, C, D, etc. And then on the other screen, we are going to be looking at different words. Okay, so that you know the sound that it produces and you, then you can associate it with a word. Alright, let's start. As you can see, the header is El Alfabeto Español, which means the Spanish alphabet. Now, let's first look at these three columns that we have here. The first one is Letra, which means the English letter. The letter, Letra means letter. The next one is Nombre. Nombre means a lot of things. It can mean a name here. But in this sense, it means how are we going to pronounce it? Okay, what is the sound associated with that particular letter in English? Alright, now the best part here is we are not really going to be learning any new alphabets. Because the alphabets are pretty much the same in English as well as in Spanish. What is different is the pronunciations associated with some alphabets. Alright. To understand this better, let's just start with the session. The first one in English is A. In Spanish, it is A. A. Alright. Now, let's look at one of the words associated with it. Okay. The word is abeca. Abeca. Okay. Now, here, this day here, in English, when we say A for apple, right? Here, it is pretty much the same. We say A de Abeca. A for or A for. Alright? So, the sound associated with A is A in Spanish. We say A in Spanish when we want to say A. And the word is Abeca. Abeca. Alright? Now, let's look at the next one. B in English is B in Spanish. B. Let's look at the word associated. It is bicicleta. Bicicleta. B, T, bicicleta. Again, the alphabet doesn't change in Spanish. It remains the same. What changes is the pronunciation. Alright? That is why it is B, T, bicicleta. B for bicycle in English. B, de bicicleta. Let's move on to the next one. When we are reciting alphabets in Spanish, for C, we are going to say C. C. However, there are two sounds associated with C. When it is before E and I. When C, the alphabet C is before E and I, it has the soft C sound. Let's look at two words. Cecilia. Cecilia. Cecilia is the name of a girl. Cecilia. And the second one, cifra. Cifra. Cifra in Spanish means number. Okay, so whenever it comes in front of E and I, it has a soft C sound. Cecilia. Cifra. However, what happens when it comes in when it comes for A, O, or U. We are going to look at one example now. When C comes in front of A, it carries the K sound. You can say that. The hard sound. Hard C. In this case, we are going to pronounce this word as casa. Casa. Okay, understood the difference when it comes with E or I, it is going to have the soft C sound as we have, right? 
in english as well cecilia cifra however when it comes with a o or u is going to carry the k sound casa casa all right let's move on d in english is de in spanish de let's look at one example de de dedo 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 is a dice as you can see in the measure dedo all right let's move on to the next one e is a in spanish a it has a slight glide to the word a a de elefante elefante the next one that we are looking at is g now in spanish again just like c we have two sounds associated with this letter when it comes with e or i there is a soft h sound soft h what do i mean by that let's look at this word in english we'll say geraldo in spanish it is heraldo heraldo whereas when g comes with a o or u again the sound is pretty focused pretty hard let's look at one word now that we're done with e let's look at f f in english is f in spanish f let's look at one example f de fresa always remember when i see f it is when we are reciting the alphabets in spanish however when you say the word you're just going to say it as we do it in english as well fresa fresa however when reciting the alphabets the sound that is associated with f is f in spanish f and when a word starts with f the word that we looked at is fresa fresa all right let's move on to g now again just like c we have two sounds associated with the alphabet g when it comes with e or i okay it has a soft h sound for example geraldo in english we'll say this word is geraldo but in spanish it is going to be heraldo very soft h you are not you will be able to hear it but not very strongly heraldo and when it comes with a or o or u how will it sound let's look at one word when it comes with a is pretty much like the sound that we have in english gato gato let's look at it once again when it comes with e or i it has a soft h sound heraldo but when it comes with a or o or u it has this usual hard g sound gato gato all right let's look at the next one h very simple when we looked at three things i told you that h is always silent and that's what it is whenever you have any word starting with h if you have a word with h in the middle at the end you are not really going to pronounce it okay for example okha okha if you if you hear me you can see that i have actually pronounced the and i word starting with o and not with h you will not say okha we are not going to say that this is silent you are going to say okha and if you are reciting alphabets you are going to pronounce it as ache ache okay just for the sake of pronouncing alphabet just like we have a b c d e we also have a b c d e at that time we are going to pronounce h as ache however in a word it is always silent we are going to say this word is okha just like we learned ola okay let's move on now the next one is i i in english is pretty much the same we will pronounce this as let's say e double e probably e let's look at one example isla that's why i said double e isla i is pronounced as double e e and the word is isla now let's look at the next alphabet 
Now with J, one thing that we need to know is Spanish alphabets doesn't really have any particular sound as J. Like we have, let's say, jug, jam. They don't have it. The sound that's pronounced, the sound that's that you can hear when someone says J in Spanish is more or less like K, K. So when you're reciting alphabets, you're going to say Kota. When you're reciting alphabets, you're going to say Kota for J. However, let's look at this one word here. This is a name, a proper noun. We're not going to say Javier. We're going to say Javier, Javier. Or let's look at one more word. Kirafa. Kirafa. It's not girafa. Okay? There's no pronunciation of J whatsoever. You want to say? You're going to associate it with the K sound when you put K and H together. Kirafa. Let's move on to the next one. K is when you're reciting alphabets, you can just say ka. However, this is a foreign letter, so you're not going to find Spanish words which are formed with this particular letter. All right? But when you're citing alphabets, you're going to associate the sound ka with the alphabet K. Let's look at one example just for the sake of understanding how still it sounds. This is an English word, koala. Pretty much the same in Spanish because we don't really have any Spanish words starting with K. Koala. So if you, in case you see any letter, just pronounce it like we do it in English. Let's look at the next one. El in English is LA in Spanish. LA. When reciting alphabets, we are going to associate the sound LA, but in a word, it is Luna. Pretty much the same as in English. Luna. Luna is moon. Luna. LA. De. Luna. Let's move on to the next one. Pretty much the same. M is M-A in Spanish. M-A when reciting alphabets. How does it sound when it comes in a word? Pretty much the same. Mono, like in English. Mono. M-A de mono. M for monkey. N in English is N-A in Spanish. N-A. N-A de nube. Nube is cloud. Na sound associated with n word is nube. Now this is a new. I won't say a new word. We don't have this word in English. However, this we have this sound and this alphabet in Spanish, and it occurs pretty frequently. What? How are we going to pronounce this? Imagine that n and y are together. For example, banyan. You must have heard this word banyan tree, right? Nya. That's the sound. When N and Y come together, the sound that's pronounced is new, manion. When you're pronouncing, when you're reciting the alphabet, how do we say it? N-E. N-E. N-E de España. Again, if you can hear, new, España. N-E de España. Wherever this alphabet comes, the start and the middle at the end, the sound is always going to be the same. N and Y put together. Nya. España. Okay. Let's look at the next one. O is simple O. No change in the word whatsoever. Let's look at no, no change in the pronunciation whatsoever. Let's look at one word. O de ocho. Ocho is number eight. O de ocho. P becomes P in Spanish. P. Word is pollo. Pollo. Okay, next one is Q. Q, you can think of the sound associated as Q. This is a Q and a U. And the pronunciation for this particular, when you're reciting the alphabets, is Q. Q. However, when you, this is for when you're reciting the alphabet. How do I say this? When I'm, when probably Q comes in a word, pretty much the sound is pretty much associated with K. Here it is queso. Queso, I'm pretty sure you've heard this word before as well. Queso is cheese. Queso. Cu de queso. Let's move on to the next one. This is R. R in Spanish is R. R. Let's look at one more example for R. R. 
de rosa. Rosa. Rosa has two meanings. Rosa can mean the flower rose and it can also mean the color pink. That's why I've put a pink rose here. Ere de rosa. All right, let's go to the next alphabet now. We are going to be looking at this double R in a sec. Before, before that, let's just finish these alphabets. S is simple S in Spanish. Let's look at one example. S and the word that I've taken is sun. Sol. Pretty much the same as in English. When you're reciting the alphabets, we're going to say S. When we want to say S. And the word associated is soul. Next one is T in English becomes T. Okay, if if by now you must have understood, we really don't have these strong, very strong, sharp pronunciations in Spanish or rather in most of the European languages. So we're not going to say T. We're going to say T. T is a hard sound in English, but in Spanish it is not so. It is T. Let's look at one example. T. This is not tarta. This is tarta. Very soft. Tarta. Te, te, tarta. Let's go to the next one. U in English is U. Take, think of it as double O. U. And the example that we have here is uvas. U de uvas. Grapes. Uvas. Next one is B. Okay, now Many people even pronounce this as uve when they're saying the alphabets. So you can say ve or uve. Ve or uve. Uve or ve de vaso. Vaso. Let's look at the next one. W. Doble ve. Very simple to understand. If we have seen this, ve is v and doble is double. So double v. W. Now with w, the thing is we don't really, pretty much like k, we don't have any words. Starting with W, probably just for the sake of understanding, we can take one name, Walter in English. In Spanish, if you really have to say it, you're going to say Walter. Walter. Okay? But again, we don't really have any Spanish words starting with W. That's the reason we don't have any Spanish words associated with it. Next one is X. Again, while reciting the alphabets, we are going to associate the sound X. Equis. But if there is a word, we are going to say, let's take xylophone in English. In Spanish, it is xylophono. Xylophono. Okay? Equis de xylophono. Don't worry about why it does it sound like this. That's just when you're pronouncing the alphabets, reciting the alphabets. But when it comes to the word pronunciation, it's pretty much very close to how we say it otherwise in our language as well. Xylophono. Let's move on to Y. Again, pretty much like X. When you're reciting the alphabets, it's very different. When you're reciting the alphabets for Y, you're going to say Y. Y. Let's look at one example. Pretty much like English. Yo-yo. Yo-yo. Y. De yo-yo. Okay, this part, if you've come, if you've understood now, is just for reciting the alphabets. But the examples that you've seen, that's the best part with this language. Most of the times, the way you write it, that's how you speak it. Yo-yo. Move, let's move to the last alphabet. Z. In Spanish it is seta. This is a very soft S or a C sound associated with it. Seta. Let's look at one example. Zapatos. Zapatos. Okay, now I am going to, we're going to talk about some special mentions here. We looked at C before E, I, N, O, U. We have some alphabets. Now these alphabets, C, H, and double L were a part of the Spanish alphabet directory before. Okay, they are not, they do not have any mention in the alphabets now as such when you go through Spanish alphabets, but these are absolutely important. Okay, because we have a lot of words in Spanish which have this sound. They might start with these or they might come in the middle. So it's very important for us to know how to pronounce them. CH, you can pronounce it as CHE, CHE, CHE. Let's look at one example. CHICO, 
और चीका चिको इज अ बॉय चीका इज अ गर्ल चीको चे अरे नेक्स्ट वन इज डबल एल डबल एल हैज यू कैन एसोसिएटेड विथ एलिए एलिए वन एग्जाम्पल कैन बी यूविया यूविया विच मीन्स रेन्स ओके नाउ यू विल हेयर इफ यू लिसन टू एनी स्पेनिश वीडियोज और ऑडियोज और पॉडकास्ट यू विल हेयर पीपल सिंग दस इन टू वीज यूविया और जूविया बोथ आर करेक्ट यूविया और जूविया for the sake of ease you can for the to make it easier for you always remember that is it sounds like a y pretty much like a y in in the language uvia and this one this is a part of the alphabets however i have put it separately so that you can remember it when you put double r together it sounds like an engine of a car r r r you don't have to pronounce it very strongly however you should be able to make out the difference between ere and erre ere that we saw for r and now we have erre let's look at one example carro carro is a car or burro donkey carro or burro okay now what we are going to do is we are going to just look at all these alphabets once again we're not going to look at the pronunciations while reciting the alphabets we're just going to focus on how are they pronounced all right a de abeja p de bicicleta c de casa t de dedo e de elefante f de fresa हे दे गो आछे दे ओखा ई दे इसला खोता दे खिराफा का दे कोवाला एले दे लुना एम ए दे मोनो एन ए दे नुबे एन ए दे एस्पानिया O de ocho, P de pollo, Q de queso, R de rosa, S de sol, T de tarta, U de uvas, V de vaso. Now, if you remember, again. I have a lot of students who come to me and say, "Why does this sound different, and why is the word different?" Always remember, this is just for you to recite the alphabets. So X is X, but the word is xylophono. Y is Y, the yo-yo, and the last one, Z, the zapatos. Okay, let's look at these special mentions as well. C is ch- is ch- chico or chica. Double L is elie, juvia or juvia. Double R is r, r. Carro, burro. Carro, burro. All right. Now let's do one thing. Let's just do a quick review. Okay. Repasa means review. We are. Going to look at some words. This is like a small fun quiz, and we are going to see what are these words. Let's see. M A is. You are going to tell me what is the alphabet. I've give. I've given you the sounds that we make when we are reciting the alphabets, and you are going to think and write down, just like I'm writing it down, the English word or the letra associated with it. M A is M A is A. A is T, A is E. Again, M A is M, A, T, E, C, A, S, E. Mathematics, which is the same as in English, maths. Mathematics. That's how you pronounce it. Mathematics. 
Let's move on to the next one. Ache is H. Oh, Ere is R. Again, Ere is R. I, B is B, L is L, and A is Horrible. Pretty much the same. Horrible. In English, we say horrible, but in Spanish, silent H. So, Horrible. Horrible. Let's move on to the next one. B is B, O is O, L A is L, E is I, V is V, E is I, R is A. Bolivia. Bolivia is the name of a country. Bolivia. N A is N, O is O, M A is M, B is B, R is R, A is E. Nombre. Nombre. Next one. We've already seen this when we're looking at alphabets. O is O, C is C, H is H, and O. Now, if you remember when I spoke about C and H coming together, the sound that they make is J. Let's look at how this is pronounced. Ocho. C and H. Cho. Ocho. Ocho is number eight. Ocho. Let's look at the next one, a big word. C, U, M, P, L, E, A. It is N, E, so your N is going to have that little curved line on top. And O and S. Cumpleaños. Cumpleaños. It means birthday. Cumpleaños. The next one, last one is V is V, I, V, I, R. Vivir. Vivir is to live. Vivir. Let's look at all of these quickly. Matemáticas. Horrible. Bolivia. Nombre. Ocho. Cumpleaños. Vivir. Okay? All right. That's about it for today. I know this was a lot because we... Even if the alphabets are pretty much the same in Spanish, however, the pronunciations change a bit. So what you can do is, if this has been a lot of information can you, for you, you can break it into parts. First, go through the pronunciations, write them down. That's the best practice that you can do. Write your English alphabet, A. Okay. How is it pronounced in Spanish? Ah. Okay, let me write down a word. You can go through Google. You can look at a few more alphabets. You can see how they sound. Okay, the more you listen to it, the more you look into it, the more you are going to retain the information better and remember, okay, and learn the pronunciation as well. And then you can go through the presentation where we looked at different words like A, 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 B, K, P, B, Bicicleta. If you do it like this, alphabets are pretty much easier to remember and you will definitely remember when you look at new words in Spanish, how to pronounce them. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. Hasta luego. Hola estudiantes, ¿cómo están? I hope you've watched the previous Spanish videos and uh, I hope you have gained a lot of knowledge or you're finding the videos very knowledgeable and hope you're learning a lot as well. Today we are going to look at another very important topic which is parts of speech nouns. Okay, so what are we going to cover under nouns today? First, we're going to look at articles and just like in English, in Spanish as well, we have two sets of articles. We have definite articles and we have indefinite articles. Then we are going to learn how to recognize gender of a noun. Unlike English, in Spanish, all the nouns have a gender. So imagine you're going to come across a lot of nouns in Spanish. For example, a bench, a sofa, a class, a book. How do we look at noun and understand if it's masculine or feminine? We are going to look at a few tips and tricks today to understand this as well as we are going to learn how to turn a singular noun into plural and vice versa. To give you an example, I have written what is, let's first look at the pronunciation, el sustantivo, el sustantivo, which means the Noun. The noun. And now let's look at its plural. Los sustantivos. Los sustantivos, which means the, again, same, 
but the nouns. So this is the singular and this is the plural. Okay, this is what we are going to learn today. The articles, the is it masculine or feminine? What is the noun? And how to turn it into plural or how to turn it back to singular. Alright? So, let's start with indefinite articles. Okay? To talk about its distinction from a definite article, whenever you're referring to, whenever you're talking about something non-specific, something not particular, you are going to use the indefinite article. Okay? Let's look at these articles in English first so that you can relate to them in Spanish. In English, we either say a or an when we are referring to something singular, just true. But when you're referring to something in plural, multiple objects, you're going to say some. For example, a boy, its plural becomes some boys. Okay? For example, a hat. Its plural would be some hats. Okay? Now, when you are talking about a singular masculine noun and you want to use an indefinite article like a or an, you are going to say un. You are going to use un. U-N. When you are referring to a singular feminine noun, and you want to use an indefinite article, you are going to say una. Okay, let's say it again. When you are talking about a masculine singular noun and you want to use an indefinite article like a or an, you are going to use un, un. And when you are referring to a feminine singular noun and again you want to use an indefinite article, you are going to use the article una. Okay, now for the plural one, when you are referring again to a masculine plural noun and you want to use an indefinite article, you are going to say unos, unos. When you are talking about a feminine plural noun and you want to use an indefinite article, you are going to say unas. Okay, so when you use a or an in English, okay. And you want to use the same in Spanish, you first have to understand if your noun is masculine or feminine. If it's a masculine noun, use un. If it's a feminine noun, use una. Similarly, when in English we use some for plural nouns, in Spanish, again, you have to make the distinction if it's a masculine noun or if it's a feminine noun. If it's a masculine plural noun, please use unos. And if it's a feminine plural noun, use Unas. Alright, let's go to the next one. Again, a quick definition for definite articles. When we are referring to something in particular, when we are referring to a particular thing, something which is specific, we are going to use definite article. Okay, in English we just have one definite article, the, for singular, plural, irrespective of the number. Irrespective of the number, we just have the. Again, in Spanish we have four articles. Okay, let's look at the same way. Let's look at this the same way. When I want to talk about a masculine singular noun, but I want to use a definite article like the, for masculine, I'll use L, E L, L. When I want to talk about a feminine singular noun and I want to use a definite article, I'm going to use la, la. When I want to talk about a masculine plural noun and I want to use a definite article, I'm going to use los. L-O-S. Los. I want to talk about a feminine plural noun and I want to use a definite article. Las. Okay. So, your sequence of thinking, your sequence of determining this should be first, do I want to use an indefinite article or a definite article? Okay. Second one. Is the noun masculine or feminine? Third, is the noun singular or plural? Understood? For example, I'm going to write down the steps here. First, determine, you have to determine what is the article that you want to use. Okay? Do you want to use a definite article or do you want to use an indefinite article? Your next step should be, is this noun a masculine or a feminine noun? 
So your gender would be your second. Determination and third would be the number. Is it a singular or a plural noun? And depending on that, you're going to make the decision of using the correct article. Now, let's look at the first thing. Now, we've looked at, look, looked at definite and indefinite articles. Now, our second step is, how do I determine or recognize if a noun is masculine or feminine? There are lots of rules here, honestly. But we are, today, we are going to look at the most basic ones, which should help you with most of the nouns that you come across. Alright, so if a noun ends in O and if a noun ends in OR, most of the times, please note the word most. Most of the times, the words, these nouns are masculine. If they end in O and OR. Let's look at some examples now. Okay, okay. one example would be Un Chico. Un Chico. What is Un? Un can be A. Or an, depending on the noun. Chico is a boy. So here it is a boy. Un chico. Let's look at one more example with OR. Un ordenador. We are saying it just the way we are writing it. Un ordenador. Ordenador is a computer. Okay, so this is a computer. Alright, we are going to look at exceptions, but a little later in the session. Okay, when a noun ends in O and O, most of the times it is a masculine noun. Now, let's look at feminine nouns. How do I determine if a noun is feminine? When a noun ends in A and if a noun ends in Sion, C-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, T-A-D, T-A-D and T-U-D. These are the most common endings for a feminine noun. So, when a noun ends in A, C-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, D-A-D, D-A-D and T-O-D, the noun is mostly feminine. Now, let's look at some examples here. One would be, we looked at on Chico, right, in the masculine one. Let's turn it into feminine one. You already know for feminine one, we are going to say una, right, on una. And Chico becomes Chica. I'm sure you've heard this word before. Una Chica, which is which means a girl. Simple. Let's look at one from these endings. Una Cancion. C-A-N-C-I-O-N. Una Cancion, which means a song. Okay. Now, let's look at the exceptions. These, as I said, there are multiple rules associated with understanding, with determining a noun if it's masculine and feminine. And in the interim, we also have a lot of exceptions that we have to try and remember. Let's first look at some of the exceptions for masculine nouns. I'm going to just write down the noun here rather than with the article. Now, imagine if this L was not there here. What would have happened? You would have looked at this A and thought, Simple, it's a feminine noun. That's what you were taught. But no, every rule has an exception. So you're going to come across a lot of nouns which do not follow the general rules, the general set of pattern or this general pattern of rules. So these are some of the exceptions. El clima. Clima is climate. El problema. Problema is a problem. So do not Whenever you are confused, okay, this is something that I tell all my students. Whenever you're confused looking at the ending, because your first thought is it ends in A, it is a feminine noun. But what if it's not? What if it's an exception? Keep a dictionary handy. Keep a Spanish to English, English to Spanish dictionary handy. And look at this word. If you go to a dictionary and see clima, it would be written as M, which means it's a masculine noun. Okay, and it's an exception. Because it doesn't follow the set pattern. So, it's an exception. And you're going to find multiple nouns like this. Right now, we're just looking at few. So, you understand how the nouns are built in Spanish language. Okay, now let's look at some of the exceptions in feminine nouns. Let's look at la mano. Mano is hand. Now, when you look at mano, imagine again that the article was missing and you just seen mano. Your first thought is again, oh, it ends in no. It's a masculine noun. Simple. Again, it's an exception. Okay? So, keep your dictionary handy. Whenever you're confused, go back to this word and check what is the gender. Let's look at one more noun. 
this is not an exception i'll tell you why photo is an abbreviation a short form of the bigger word which is photographia just like in english we have photography in spanish we say photographia however this is a big word and when you can make it into something like photo why would you say the entire word so now people really really say photographia they would rather say photo but imagine if this was not there and as a new language learner you just see oh and say hey, okay this is a masculine noun let me put l in front of it no it is the abbreviation of a bigger word which ends in a photographia e so this is not an exception however in the interim people who, ha- who do not know the entire word look at it and think that this is the full word but it is nothing but the short form of a bigger word okay again there are many exceptions like this out there you can refer to your dictionary or whenever you come across let's let's assume that you're reading something in spanish or you're studying and you come across a word which doesn't have an article in front of it and you want to understand what it is you can go back to your dictionary and check what is the gender okay because you're going to again come across many such exceptions now that we've looked at how to determine a masculine noun how to determine a feminine noun we've also looked at the exceptions now let's look at some common nouns okay we are going to look at only two right now two patterns one that ends in ista what is a common noun simple you can use this with masculine as well as feminine and the other one is nte let's look at some examples one would be el taxista i'm pretty sure you understand what it means it is the taxi driver now if you are referring to a guy you're going to say el taxista what if it's a female taxi driver you're going to say la taxista very simple this is the best part with common nouns you just have to change the article okay let's look at nte example for nte el cantante which means singer the singer now here i'm talking about a male singer what if i'm talking about a female singer very simple la cantante okay so this is the only rule that you have to follow here just you just have to know whom you are whom you are referring to if it's a male you will use el if it's a female you will use la now that we have looked at the common nouns we are going to talk about some special mentions okay we have looked at some basic rules till now but we do not have set pattern where we say that a noun if a noun ends in vowel a e i o u it is this gender if a noun ends in a certain consonant other than a e i o u is a consonant for us if it ends in a certain consonant it is this gender no we again do not have any set pattern for it let's look at one example i'm not going to write down the article first we have something like floor we have something like lose thing like hotel looking at these it's not easy easy to determine if it's a masculine or a feminine noun but all of these are gendered in spanish for example floor which means a flower is la flor luz is light so la luz and hotel remember h is always silent hotel is a hotel which is l flower light hotel la flor la luz el hotel the reason i put these under special mentions is because their endings and what we saw before have no relation so what i'm trying to say here is that you're going to come across thousands and thousands of nouns in spanish language and they might not end in o they might not end in or they might not end in a or cio and sio and that time what are you going to do you're going to refer to your dictionary and understand what is the gender once you know the gender it is going to be easy for you to use the article if it's a masculine or if it's a feminine okay your second step would be to determine if it's singular or plural and then you decide if you want to use a definite article or an indefinite article okay for example let's look at floor itself you want to say the flower now you first check go and check what is the word for flower floor now when you remember the rule like okay this is a word which ends in a consonant and i'm not sure if it's masculine or feminine you go back to your dictionary 
in your dictionary next to floor it will be written in small if it's a masculine or feminine f would be written which is feminine you write it in your copy la flo the flower this way when you note it down when you search for it this is going to help you retain your memory of these nouns that is yes, i remember i checked for that word in the dictionary and it was a feminine noun now very simple last last part of today's session is how to convert a noun from singular to plural and vice versa okay we just have three rules very simple rules if a noun ends in o we add s to it to make it plural if a noun ends in consonant then we add es to make it plural along with s rather than making it as a third rule if it ends in a vowel you just add s to make it plural okay and the last one if a noun a singular noun ends in z you add c e s to make it plural okay so your first rule is if it ends in a vowel a e i o u i will add an s to make it plural if it ends in a in a consonant i add e s to make it plural and if it ends in a z in the letter z i add c e s let's look at some examples let's look at the example that we saw be before un chico okay now should i still go with un here or something is going to change something is going to change now it's not just the noun it's also the article that has to change okay in english we don't have this distinction a bo the boy the boys but in spanish the article also changes because if you remember we have a singular article we have a plural article so again the same steps that you have to determine if it's singular okay it's this if it's plural your article also has to change be careful if you say on chicos it is wrong let's look at the consonant one el hotel we looked at this example before el hotel becomes los hoteles again please be careful the article as well changes el hotel los hoteles and the last one we saw this word as well before la luz was las luces the z becomes c e s and again the article changes so when you're trying to do this exercise of singular to plural plural to singular don't just focus on the noun also focus on the article all right now the last thing today is the quiz time simple you we are going to turn the singular noun into a plural noun okay let's start with the first one el animal el becomes los and since this ends in a consonant i'm going to add es what you can do is since i'm giving out the answers here you can pause pause the video write down the answers and pause the video and then you can check with me if the answer is correct great if it's not correct you can check what is gone wrong the next one is una amistad i have to make this plural so una becomes unas and amistad becomes amistades animal is animal amistad is friendship el carro el becomes los and since this ends in a vowel i just add an s to it la clase carro is a car clase is class la becomes las and this is a vowel so i add an s las clases un estudiante un becomes unos and estudiante since this ends in a vowel i just add an s and the last one la becomes las photo becomes photos so whenever you have you do this practice check both i have to change this as well and then i have to change this this way you will not make the mistake of not changing the article and just the noun el animal became los animales una amistad becomes una unas amistades el carro becomes los carros la clase becomes las clases and un estudiante becomes unos estudiantes and la foto becomes las fotos okay that's it for today we have learned a lot today we have learned we have looked at articles definite and definite we have looked at how to recognize a noun from masculine to feminine we have also looked at common nouns and the last thing that we looked at singular and plural so 
wherever you feel stuck go through the video multiple times write down the rules writing down always always helps that this is what i tell all my students write the rules down go through your dictionary okay wherever you're confused your dictionary is your best friend when it comes to learning a new language do these exercises so that it becomes easy for you to recognize and as we said there are multiple more rules there are multiple more exceptions however the more you learn the more vocab you learn you go through let it be in a blog or in your textbook or in any or in even a, in a story book that's how you're going to build up on your vocabulary all right i hope today's session has also been helpful to you thank you so much for your time hasta luego